Hello YouTube friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to be addressing damaged metabolisms and how to fix them. So just a quick reminder before I jump in, this is not meant as any sort of medical advice. And if you feel like you're struggling with a damaged metabolism, I'm actually recommending that you go see a registered dietitian so that you can map out a plan that's specific to your needs. In fact, that's actually what I did when I first was diagnosed with my food allergies, and that helped me tremendously, if even only for the peace of mind of knowing that I was getting all the nutrients that I needed in order to restore a balance to my body. So highly recommend that if you are in this boat. And without further ado, let's jump in. I've only really heard other people addressing metabolism in the context of dieting, whether that's prolonged restrictive dieting or yo-yo dieting or really any of those variations of traditional dieting for the purpose of losing weight. While these definitely have an impact on your metabolism and I don't want to take away from that reality at all, I do however just want to address that those who have suffered from intolerances or allergies that have gone undiagnosed for extended periods of time or even fairly brief periods of time, but when they might have lots of different foods that cause reactions in them, that can also lead to metabolic damage. And when I say metabolic damage, I'm really just referring to it that way because that is how it's commonly referred to as. I really like to think of it more as metabolic adaptation because it really is just your body responding to the differences and adapting as opposed to being damaged and unfixable. Metabolism itself is often just sort of referred to as your body's magic bullet to burning calories and losing weight. And I hate this because it is so much more than that. Your metabolism is actually all of the processes that are occurring on a cellular chemical level in order for your body to maintain its health in a myriad of ways and not just regulating your weight. Adaptive thermogenesis or metabolic damage occurs when your body is in a state of a caloric deficit. Likewise, we incur a sort of metabolic damage when we have a nutrient deficiency or otherwise aren't getting all of the things that our body needs in order to maintain all of those cellular processes. And I just want to say this can happen through a diet of choice or necessity. There are definitely those two routes to get to this end destination. So whether it's something that your body is doing to yourself, like if you've seen my story video, you'll definitely know what I mean by that, or whether it's a diet that you're choosing in order to try and help your health, these are some consequences that both of those routes can have in common. But just to give some validation to the food allergy crowd who may be watching this video, a 2011 study investigated the connection between food allergies and metabolism in mice. And the mice induced with a food allergy actually experienced more weight loss and more rapidly than anticipated based on the other controls. The researchers point to adipose tissue inflammation and systemic metabolic alterations in order to explain their weight loss. The researchers suggest that food allergy symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea likely contributed to the mice's unusual weight loss. Both of these symptoms result in an unbalanced ion exchange and water transfer, which may impair nutrient absorption and contribute to weight loss. And for those of you who don't have food allergies, another study investigating the effect of energy restriction over the course of two years concluded that in lean humans, an adapted decrease in energy expenditure appears to occur not only in states of life-threatening undernutrition, but also in responses to less severe energy restriction sustained over several years. So whether your diet has been extreme for a short period of time or just cutting back on calories slightly for an extended period of time, this can affect your metabolism. So as I mentioned before, whether you're coming from a position of food allergies or diets, both of these routes are perfectly valid reasons to feel like you may be experiencing some metabolic adaptation. If you're wondering if this maybe does apply to you, I'm just going to go through some of the symptoms 
that lots of people experience when they have damaged metabolisms. Often some of the first noticeable symptoms come from your brain. These can come in the form of memory impairment, sluggish cognition, and an inability to focus or a decreased focus. And this is largely because our brains have such a huge energy requirement. So when we're not giving our bodies enough, our brains often suffer quickly as a consequence. Granted, like our bodies are actually very smart. So they'll also adapt in a way that they're going to try to send as much energy to your brain as possible so that this doesn't happen. But if you're not getting enough, your body has to make compromises. Additionally, if the gastrointestinal tract isn't getting enough energy, it can cause bowel irregularities. And this will often result in maybe being diagnosed with or at least considered for conditions like IBS. I know my doctor definitely considered me for that at a time, but it was all actually linked back to my allergies and needing to actually get enough food. Other symptoms include a myriad of bodily functions. That can include low body temperature, low energy or fatigue, slow healing, mental health complications like depression or anxiety, and sleep disorders or headaches. You may feel your immune system is either underreactive or overreactive if you're constantly getting colds or infections. You may be experiencing muscle or joint pain. You may have menstrual disorders and infertility as a woman. And in fact, if you're not getting enough calories, it's very common for your period to stop altogether. You may have numb hands or feet. You may experience a dulling or loss of senses like your vision, taste, or smell. And you may have changes in your hair, which cause it to be brittle, fall out, or become coarse, dry, or even oily, which I feel like just describes like all the hair types ever, <laughs> but whatever. So just to reiterate, if these symptoms are resonating with you and this content so far is resonating with you, I highly recommend you go seek the help of a registered dietitian because they'll be able to make sure that your personal nutritive needs are met. But just to instill some hope, I know that in the fitness influencer world, I've heard numerous sources claim that you can't fix a damaged metabolism. And this was devastating to me when I was first diagnosed with my allergies and I was on my mission to restore my health. And it felt like that was a huge roadblock if that was true. And at the time I was using fitness influencers quite heavily for my health and nutrition information, which was not wise, but <laughs> it's what I did. But I think our bodies are a lot more forgiving than we give them credit for. They want to be healthy and whole. So I'm going to turn to the scientific literature to explain what things can actually be done to restore a metabolism to its full potential. So number one is just make sure you're getting enough calories. Because of the deep-seated influence of diet culture in this world, it's really all too easy to underestimate the amount of calories we actually need in a day because a lot of the numbers out there are really geared toward losing weight as opposed to maintaining or even restoring your metabolism. And especially while you're trying to restore your health, your energy needs are actually greater than they would normally be. So it's important, again, to work with a registered dietitian so that you know your specific needs and you can be getting the energy that you actually need in order to not just maintain, but actually restore your health. If you think about it, your body is really only able to use the energy that you give it. So if you're constantly not giving it enough energy, it has to really prioritize tasks and some things are very neglected in your body. So in order to make sure that those neglected tasks get done and your regular maintenance gets done, you need that extra amount of energy in order to come back to an equilibrium. Number two has to do with exercise. Intense exercise can be counterproductive while your metabolism is healing because you're spending your energy in a way that isn't directly contributing to your healing. So if you're not then getting that energy replaced through calories, it can just sort of lead to that calorie deficit and 
we're back where we started essentially. And this isn't to say that exercise is bad and not to do it. Of course, exercise is wonderful. Just know that if you are actually experiencing a damaged metabolism, intense exercise can have negative consequences. <laughs> the third thing, of course, is to get adequate sleep. This allows your body time to make its necessary repairs and to keep your energy up when, like I mentioned before, your energy needs are higher than they typically are. Number four is to do whatever you can to reduce your stress. And this can look different for everyone, whether that's just taking some time to sip on some tea or to go for a walk, do some yoga, meditate, whatever it is for you, that is essential and it's important to reduce your stress because chronic stress is known to adversely affect your metabolism and can actually lead to weight gain, which if you're in this process of healing, that can trigger some intense emotions for those of us who have been struggling with diet culture. And number five is actually from my personal experience, which sort of has to do with what I just said, but it's important to accept your body as you heal it's more than likely that your body is going to fluctuate in its size, shape, and weight. So all of these metrics that we're used to kind of looking at for one reason or another, they need to lose their value because your value is really intrinsic and inside of yourself. And as you're going through this process and these changes are occurring, it's essential that you maintain that first ideal is your health and not any of these other metrics that you may have wanted or held as goals in the past. And that can be incredibly difficult to accept, especially if you do hold on to these ideas of what your body should look like or what weight you should have, but know that your body is actually very smart, honestly, and much smarter than we often give it credit for. But we have a set point or a settling range where your body will come to it as long as you're eating intuitively and doing your best to give it the foods that it needs. And that includes actually giving it enough calories and giving it enough nutrients so that you can thrive. But know that it can be a process to get there and that set point might not be what you think your ideal weight is but that doesn't make it wrong. So whatever that looks like for you, do your best to accept your body as it is and love yourself no matter what changes you may go through. At any rate, if this video has been of value to you, I would greatly appreciate it if you shared it with someone who you think would enjoy this content or give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Metabolisms, that sounds weird. Whatever. Metabolism, whatever. <laughs>